All right. All right. So now Hank is cruising along in his music career. He hit number four with Move It On Over, and there were other hits. We can't, we don't have time to play them all tonight. So at this point, Hank and Audrey moved to Shreveport, Louisiana, and he started working on a radio show called the Louisiana Hayride. Has anybody ever heard of that? The Louisiana Hayride. The Louisiana Hayride was a radio show that was very much like the Grand Old Opry, but in my opinion, it was better because what they did was they, they promoted new musicians. You didn't have to have a number one hit already to get a spot on the Louisiana Hayride. That's why Hank didn't get hired for the Grand Old Opry at first, because he didn't have a hit yet. The Grand Old Opry only would hire people who had a hit song out. So the Louisiana Hayride, they did the opposite. They would welcome these musicians, and they also did something else different. The Grand Old Opry would only allow acoustic guitars. The Louisiana Hayride would allow both electric guitars and acoustic guitars. And guess who, we're not going to talk about him tonight, we'll talk about him another time. The, the Louisiana Hayride was the bridge to stardom for a guy named Elvis Presley. Because the Grand Old Opry wouldn't invite Elvis back, they didn't like him. But the Louisiana Hayride loved him. And he did a great rendition of his song, That's All Right Mama, on the Louisiana Hayride. And that got him going in his career. Do you know what happened there? So the Louisiana Hayride was, was from 1948 to 1960, it ran. And there's actually a movement to get it back going now, but it's not going now. But the Grand Old Opry still is. And Hank did get to the Grand Old Opry finally but not quite yet. So he, he was on the Louisiana Hayride every weekend, and then he would go off and do um, shows during the week all around the county and all around the, he was traveling around, playing a lot of shows and doing a lot of drinking. And so also during that time, he had a habit of, he, the drinking he, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? We can't talk about Hank without talking about drinking. Because uh, <laughs> he, he'd tell you that himself. <laughs> so, but another thing Hank liked to do during that time was he would, in between songs, he would give many sermons to his, he was very spiritual, and he would, uh, even though he was not a per person, he liked to, he liked to spout out some words of, spiritual feelings in between songs. That sometimes didn't go as well as other times, but it was okay, and people, people loved him. They loved him. So he wrote a song that I always thought was one of his religious songs, like it's called I Saw the Light. He wrote it in 1948, and I, I always assumed it had something to do with his deep feeling about religion. But when I looked into it a little further, I learned the story of what inspired him to write this song that it has become a gospel country song that's very popular today. So he, his mom, Lily, would drive him and his band to and from shows almost all the time. And the band would be sleeping or drinking or both in the back. And she, she did all the driving. And one night, they were coming back from a show. Let's see, where were they? They were coming back from a show that they had done in Alabama, but they were, they were headed back to Montgomery. And Hank was passed out in the back seat after drinking a lot and having a show. And he was kind of half awake, half passed out. And Lily spouted out, she shouted out that I, she said, I saw the light, I just saw the light. And it was the lights of the airport that was right near their house. And it meant they were almost home. And she was glad they were almost home. And they were all glad. And she said, I just saw the light. And he, when he, he got home, he just started writing. He said, that's the song. That's I saw the light. So the fact that he wrote that in a half-conscious, drunken stupor. But it did come out as a gospel country song that is beautiful. It was also the name of a book that was written about him recently. That's great to read if you ever get a chance. It was. It was covered by many people, including his idols, Roy Acuff and Ernest Tubb, and even later Johnny Cash and Carl Perkins, and lots of people, Merle Haggard, lots of people, including us. And I play this song at a lot of my sing-alongs. It's in my sing-along book.